Ladies and gentlemen, it is Wednesday night. It is 7.15 and we are live from the Thunderdome. We're at Coventry. We got Ernie in here for a couple minutes. Then we're going to bring in Joseph because tonight is fresh water. We're going to hit you guys up. We're talking about starting up your first fresh water tank. We're talking about cycling. We're talking about cleaning. But for right now, do me a favor, Peter. Hit that intro, baby. What's up, guys? What is happening? So we're waiting for Joe, but for right now, Ernie, what is happening next week? If you guys don't know, we do fresh water, salt water. We go back and forth every week. But what are we going to schedule for next week? Next week, we are going to get in depth on testing. We'll start out with the API stuff because most people start out with API in the beginning. Then you get a little more into it and you want a little bit better reading. We're going to get into all the Salifer test kits. And then after the Salifer, we'll get into the HANA test kits. And then we'll get into stuff like the Trident and the Mastronic and stuff like that for the very advanced guys. So it's going to be a lot of testing, different ways to test salinity, alkalinity, calcium, all of that fun stuff. But tonight it's fresh water. I'm just here filling in until Joe gets here. He's running a couple minutes late. Tonight is cycling fresh water tank. If you guys, for anyone out there, you're just thinking about getting into a brand new aquarium, it is all about cycling and new freshwater aquarium. And we use different uh, products. One of the biggest ones we get into is a lot of the Fritz. That's our go-to. We use some APIs and things like that. Also the right cleaning tools that you get into. When you buy an aquarium, you have to think about the long term of it. You get a whole aquarium set up, you get the aquarium home, but now that you've added everything to it, now you gotta think about what do I need dechlorinators? What do I need for cleaning tools? Um, we'll go into everything like that tonight. One of the first things is, you let that cram go for about a week. It's picking out beginning fish or letting that tank go from uh, bacteria. So well, how'd you start that off, Ernie? Uh, very first thing is basically you fill the tank. And once the tank is filled, you got to condition the water. Because if you're using city water, this takes all the chlorines and stuff out of the city water because you don't want that in there. It'll kill your bacteria that you're about to put in next. If you're using a well and tap water, it takes out any heavy metals and dissolved solids and stuff like that. So this is the first step. Then you get the tank up to temperature and you put your bacteria in. When we use bacteria, one of the ones we get into is the Turbo Star. Turbo Star is our number one. Now you're going to see a lot of different products out there, which bacteria to use. For us, the Turbo Star has worked the best and it has worked the fastest. For it to start working, though, you're going to need a moment source. Oh! All right. I am out. Joe is in. Have a good, freshy night, my friends. <laughs> Joe, hey, right, we just brought in. Uh, we were talking about Turbo Star, baby. So explain to us. We just got the tank. We got water inside the tank. Now it's time to add the Turbo Star. It's time. So you're going to want to jump the things right away. So we're talking about they just got their tank set up, right? Correct. Water's in it. That's decorated. It's all set all up the way you so want far, it. Right? Yep. So you're going to take your tank home. You're going to do that. You're going to get it up to temperature. Usually we recommend like 24 to 48 hours. Give it that time. And uh, from there, you're ready to start a couple of processes of cycling your tank. And there's a, a few ways. Two of them are my favorite. And one of them I do not uh, like as much because it takes a lot longer of a time uh, to kind of cycle the aquarium and, and it prolongs the process. So what you're going to do, you have two options. You can either use, do we have fish's fuel here? Oh, we do it right, right there. Here. All right. So you're either going to use live fish or you're going to use a product like this. This is fishless fuel from Fritz. This is the ammonium chloride product that is going to put ammonia in the directions. If you dose it, uh, like it's recommended, uh, it's going to put ammonia at two PPM. Um, and then you're going to dose your turbo start at the same time and use them conjunctively together. Now, this is a great way we call a fishless cycle. And uh, nitrifying bacteria, which is in this bottle right here, refrigerated, uh, ready to go, nitrosomus and nitrobacter, those bacteria are gonna break down and process ammonia into what we call, I can't even really, uh, I wish I had the single test kits. You dropped the ball. I'll grab it, I'll grab it, I'll grab it. Look at the single test kits. I wanna explain this. I want everybody to kind of have a good 
view of everything and get the idea. So you have ammonia. Ammonia is broken down by nitrosomus into nitrite. And then nitrite is broken down by nitrobacter into nitrate. And that is the process of cycling the aquarium. Now, the important thing here is when you're doing a fish list cycle without fish in the aquarium, and this is one of my favorite ways. My favorite way is actually using a fish cycle because you control how much is going into the aquarium at all times. Here, you're kind of um, almost guessing or taking the recommendation on how much ammonia you're going to put in the tank, and you get to test and go along and, and watch it kind of develop and uh, watch the cycle go through. Oh, and here we go. Oh, we're back. This way here, we can bring it back. There we go. This All is right. what I wanted. I just wanted to show the people. Oh, it's look at the green in there. <laughs> Ammonia to nitrite to nitrate. And that's the process right there. So each strain of bacteria will be bacteria one and bacteria two. We'll, we'll make it short so I don't have to say the scientific names of those bacteria strains continuously. Um, you have your first bacteria that breaks down ammonia, like I said, then it breaks it down and it goes to nitrite. Those two compounds are harmful to fish. Now, what your goal is, is to get them down to zero, but there is a very short window. You probably have about a week in time frame that when, you, when you're doing the, uh, the fishless cycle with the fishless fuel or some type of ammonium chloride product, um, you're, you're, you have about a solid week before all of that bacteria no longer has enough food source, energy source, which is the ammonia and the nitrite, uh, to process that and create energy to continue to sustain this. Every living thing needs that. Um, but typically, we recommend within the first one to two days uh, that you actually get fish introduced into the aquarium. Once you see those levels go down to zero on the ammonia and the nitrite, now you're going to see nitrate start to come up. And at that point, you're able to add your first inhabitants into the aquarium. Uh, with enough oxygen in the aquarium, as I was saying, uh, you'll be able to kind of give it one, two days, maybe three days, four days before you don't have to rush to the store right away. You've got a couple days, but you don't want to wait, wait another week or two weeks, three weeks or a month before you get fish in after you did your fish suicide. Because you're going to start to lose those colonies of beneficial bacteria because they, they cannot sustain themselves on just oxygen alone. Um, or you're going to have to continually... If you're waiting for a specific fish shipment to come in or something like that, you'll have to continually dose more ammonia in the tank. So they need that consistent waste. Now, my favorite way to cycle the aquarium is actually with fish. And we're going to do what? And you'll use fish with the same, the turbo start. And you're going to do it basically the same way. And you're testing throughout this entire period. Now, choosing, you'll say like, well, what about the fish? And, you know, how do we make sure they're going to be okay? Um, do we have complete here, Scott? No, we can make complete. We need, we need complete here. I mean, we have ACCR, which is kind of like, okay. We have a special guest tonight. Hello. What is happening? Salty Island makes their appearance on the first episode since, uh, oh man, since the old store, I think. Well, no, we, we have done some here. Not really. Nothing like this. We did, we did like one or two Not in the very beginning. The oh, complete. That's what I want right there. So we were talking about cycling, right? That's what we're talking about tonight. Yes. <clears throat> cycling the aquarium with fish in it. Allie, yes. do you want to add anything? Well, what, what part are you at? <laughs> so <laughs> we're basically, so some of these like comes in, they have their tanks set up, you, you give them turbo start and then you and they're like, well, I don't want to use this product. I want to put fish in it right away. How do I achieve that? What do we do? You know, like, give a scenario with um, a certain size aquarium and what type of fish, how many do you start with? Totally. Yeah. So um, the best way, if you're going to do, if you don't want to do the ammonia, the absolute best way is with some hardy fish. Um, I like doing it this way because for one, you're cycling the aquarium for that amount of fish that you have in the aquarium. You're not over cycling, you know, not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but a lot of bacteria may die off Could because it's off. yes because it doesn't have that same amount of ammonia you may have added with this um this is a great product though um if you especially if you're in a heavily stock a tank like right away if you're going to do african cichlids for example mm -hmm. that's a great um product for that but if you're just doing let's say a 10 gallon and you wanted to do some small community fish that and you want to do some hardy stuff then you get the tank set up 
you get the heater in there, you get everything running. I usually say give it 24, 48 hours to make sure everything is up to temp and everything is good. And then once that tank is up to temp, bring in a water sample to us or take home a master test kit here, which honestly I really would recommend Everybody, having. Everyone should have one. Especially beginner hobbyists because if, if you're not used to symptoms and signs of, of fish stress in the beginning, if something gets too high, if you're doing a fish cycle and say you accidentally decided you get the wrong number of fish or you're overfeeding in the beginning or something like that, um, and you need to make sure that the ammonia and nitrite levels stay at a reasonable lower level so that it's not becoming toxic to the fish. And that's what I was getting into with pulling the complete in. This is what we like to use in conjunction when you're doing a fish cycle because it's going to detoxify those nitrites and nitrates yeah, and okay. remove ammonia from the water um, to make it so that the environment is still safe for fish, but it's still in a usable form for the bacteria to break down. And you'll go through your cycle continually adding bacteria um, daily or every other day, depending on how your test kits are coming out. So we definitely recommend, um, hey, is this live? I think we're live. Yes, yes. it is. <laughs> yeah. I'm yes, here is. right now talking to you guys. I think we're live. Um, but as I was saying, so you get your massive test kit, you, or you bring a sample into us because we do test water, and you have us just check your pH. And I do like to, I run like a, an ammonia nitrite nitrate test just to make sure because your sometimes – tap water has yeah it has something in it so i always like to just check just to make sure but as long as your ph is good within normal range like seven you know seven four you know six five whatever um then you're ready to get some fish in there you don't have to wait weeks um you know you don't have to do any of that as long as the tank is up to temperature then it's good to go so you get you come in you get some hardy fish so something like danios or um platties Anything brilliant like rasboras. that. Yeah, brilliant that rasboras. Nothing will ever kill a brilliant rasbora. So uh, <laughs> that's a good option. But they do get kind of big for a 10 gallon. I don't know. Well, you didn't um, specify a specific type. I did. Gallon. I said, so you oh, got you a 10 didn't. gallon. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. I, didn't, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> so, right. so you get yourself, what I would recommend typically, so is, um, as far as amount of fish goes, at, you know, in the size of an aquarium, you have to really think about how big the fish are too. So I can't say come in and get four fish because if you're going to get, big mollies that are this big, that might be too much. But if you're going to get some Daniels that are this big, I would say get five or six, you know, so it really depends. There's really no like exact number when it comes to that. So I would always just recommend, depending on what you want to get, if you want to get a bunch of small fish, I would start with five or six. If you want to do something mm -hmm. bigger, like Molly's Platties, get like three or four to start. In a Absolutely. Ten gallon. What about if it was African cichlids? So Africans, that's actually a great question. So Africans, of course, aren't going to go in a 10 gallon, but say you have a 120 gallon tank you just set up, you want to do Africans, but you don't really feel like doing the ammonia. You just want fish in there right away. Then get the tank up to temperature, like I had said, bring a test, test it. And as long as it's good, I always would recommend starting with six to eight Africans. Absolutely. If not, you know, maybe even 10, but the 120, I would say like six or eight. About the, the anywhere from like two and a half is a decent size to start, but up to about a three and a half inch fish are good sizes where they're not too large, where they're going to produce a ton mm -hmm. of ammonia in the aquarium. Um, and they settle in a bit easier, I found, going through a cycle in the beginning um, of, of the aquarium versus some real large fish. Uh, younger fish usually do a little bit better, um, in my opinion. So, Actually, let's talk about why we're on the subject. The reality thing is you get people that buy, say, you're a map because it's a single tank. you got a 100 gallon of soil more. You're buying a bunch of Africans, right? You're using, you're using a turbo start. But what's happening is the ammonia level is still going up too fast. Like we run into all the time when we're selling tanks. Mm -hmm. How you would use the complete to help you to keep that stable because that is an issue you run into. Correct. Exactly. So if you're overstocking the aquarium, you're getting too much too fast, and you're consistently testing, and like Scott said, the ammonia level just keeps rising. Either A, you don't have enough beneficial bacteria media, or your filter just is not powerful enough. It doesn't have enough space. It's not moving enough water over that media fast enough. That, that beneficial bacteria... Let me state something real fast, real clear. Okay, this stuff does not live in the water. It can move freely on a nitrogen gas bubble, okay? But it needs to be on a surface to actually consume and break down ammonia nitrite and uh, typically um, to actually adhere to that space, it needs to be dark. It should be in darkness. Once it's adhered and, and growing and colonizing on your, your media, your porous media, whether it's some type of or a stone or ceramic media or plastic media or sponges, um, then light uh, has no effect on it. Um, but it needs to be in darkness uh, to actually colonize and grow. 
Um, so that's why some excel really well. Canisters excel really well. Uh, a hang on back that ha is very dark and blacked out. But anyway, um, so it's, that's one of two reasons. Either you don't have enough space and you're pouring all this turbo start in there and it's just not working. The ammonia just keeps going up. You just need more filtration, more media space. And that's the first thing that we would fix. Now, if you have all of that and it just keeps going up and you're just like, what is going on? That's where we'll use complete and say you're not dosing the bacteria and your ammonia is just rising because you added a whole bunch of new fish in there. You come in, you're at three, four rounds of fish. The complete can actually dose. It says do not overdose, but it is a fine line where you can overdose it a bit. It is actually it's safe up to five times. five times within a 24 hour period. So you can actually dose this for the amount of gallons is safe. So if you have a hundred gallon tank, you're going to dose two capfuls of complete every single 24 hours, and it's going to detoxify everything that's in the water, but still make it in a usable form for your turbo start to come in and break it down and move it over and make it safe for the fishies. For the fishies. So I hope say, that answers your, your question, Scott. No, that, that's pretty good because that's that's a common thing. Some people go with more mm -hmm. community style, and then some people go with, like, that's what I would choose, larger Africans. South American, I want to go quick, I want to go, go fast. fast, and that's how I go, I want to go fast! You know, that's, <laughs> the, that's the first thing I want to go, but I got to keep it realistic. Yeah. Realize. And then, also, like, some things like Turbo Start, you're probably, one bottle is not going to just solve a problem. You're right. probably going to get multiple bottles to help break that down before you get over it. So now, do you want to go into, like, after the cycle? Well, yeah, so that, that's where I kind of wanted to segue into. And also, one quick thing I wanted to add, because I do see this happen sometimes, Say you've dosed this whole bottle of bacteria and you have a 10 gallon and it's still just like ammonia will not go away. It's just like sky high and it's not cycling. It's like stuck in this spot. There's a few things. There's a few reasons for that. So sometimes it can be if you're not dechlorinating the water, Absolutely. Um, chlorine kills bacteria. So that's very important. So you want to make sure you're using something like guard or the complete that's a dechlorinator to kill uh, or kill, to neutralize uh, chlorine, so it, doesn't, kill that chlorine. so it doesn't kill the bacteria. It's super important. Listen, um, a couple other factors. Treat this too. like it's more sensitive than your fish. A couple other factors too could be that the filter, like he had said, is not big enough. So it's just not, the, there's not enough bacteria building up to be able to handle what you have in the aquarium. So there's a couple things. If you are dechlorinating and it's not getting better, then you may have to upgrade your filter because it may not be enough. Even if it's starting to struggle even from the beginning, you may just need a bigger filter all, all together. Um, so yes, yeah, so now moving on. So you've started with your new fish. You just got it going. You got your bacteria in there. There's some ammonia starting. Um, you know, wait, you know, just, just be patient because a lot of people want to come in a week later and get more fish because it's super exciting when you set up a new tank. You just Absolutely. want to get so many fish and fill it up because it gets boring looking at an empty tank or a tank with a few fish in it. But you do want to be patient with it because bacteria needs time. It needs time to build up, it needs time to grow, and you don't want to overdo it because then you're going to get a lot more issues than you, than you want. So say, I always say, you know, if you take home a kit and you have a kit at home, test it every few days um, if you're anxious about it and you just want to get fish. Test it every few days, and as long as that ammonia and that nitrite are zero, then you are safe. If they're not, then you have to just keep waiting and, like, adding bacteria and just making sure that it fully cycles. Because if it, there is any ammonia or nitrite, it is not cycled yet. Um, adding fish during that time when there is ammonia uh, or nitrite can be deadly to the fish, so we don't want to do that. Especially even, even if you're dosing this, it's especially still new fish easy. coming in. Correct. That and ammonia, not, nitrite, and nitrate are still in the aquarium. Yes, <laughs> and those fish are not used to it, so they're coming from a tank with zero ammonia, zero nitrite. Your fish right. in the aquarium are not are are used to that. You know, they it's slowly built up. Usually, the ammonia doesn't just spike overnight; it builds up. You know, the ammonia builds up as they produce waste and whatnot. So they are pretty used to it for the most part, as long as it's not sky high. But low levels, they're used to it. Fish that you're taking from the store, hopefully, are not <laughs> in any ammonia or nitrite. So if you just plop them in your tank with high ammonia or nitrite, they probably may not make it. So or at least be very stressed. Yes. Uh, so you just really want to just take it slow. But once it's fully cycled and everything's good to go, um, so, and that can be, the timing is really relative a lot of people want to know well how long do i have to wait it's really relative you really got to test it and keep track of your numbers and i could say two weeks it'll be cycled or it may even be four six weeks you know it really just depends on the individual aquarium how you're cycling i find with the ammonia um it cycles relatively quickly but it can take a few weeks for the nitrite yeah. to go away 
Um, I did notice that when we used it, but just keep, you know, doing the bacteria and being patient and it will go away. Um, but with fish, it sometimes can be a little faster or it can extend it if you don't do enough fish. So it's kind of a balance. You know, you may add four fish to the tank and it may not start cycling at all. That's a whole nother thing. Correct. You know, you so, can test and the ammonia and nitrate might still be zero after a week you've had fish in there. That means it's not cycled yet. It's not cycling at all. So you may have to add more fish. Sometimes it's not enough waste to start actually building up a biofilter. I, I see that a ton when uh, somebody comes in and I'll start them off on like say five or six fish in whatever gallons it is. But say, for an example, somebody's got like a 29 or 30 gallon tank and they start with a group of like six or eight neons. Those neon tetras produce like a very, very, very small yeah, amount of waste. Yeah. And you're not even gonna be able to trace that on the ammonia test kit. So you can start with that much and just, if you wanna go easy and ease into it, and you can dose a little amounts of bacteria and every week slowly kind of build up that school if that's what you're looking for, like a big group of schooling tetras. Um, and it's the same thing with larger fish too. It, you know, if you have a 200 gallon, you start with six or eight African cichlids that are only this big. You know, you may <laughs> not may even not. Um, trace ammonia at 0.25 GPM. And you may have to go next week, let's add another five and see what happens. And you have to de test and dose um, my general rule of thumb uh, when you're testing, and, and I think Ali's pretty much going to agree with this, is as long as the ammonia uh, and nitrite don't get above 1 ppm, if you're using complete, okay, that's going to be like a safe level uh, where your fish should, as long as they were in there before those spikes happen um, and you're using complete uh, every 24 hours, you should be totally fine. Uh, the fish should be pretty much stress-free at that point because you're using this product to its potential and you're dosing your bacteria, which should also be um, being productive and starting to break down those, those bacteria levels. Mm -hmm. um, well, <laughs> organic nitrogen levels. <laughs> um, yeah, so now you've got it cycled, you've got those fish, your first fish in there, and now it's time to add new ones. So I always suggest with people, when you set up your aquarium, you add your first set of fish, you know, you use all your bacteria. When you come back and you want to add more fish, I always say you should get another bottle of bacteria. Absolutely. The tank is still new, so it has enough bacteria to handle what's in there. But that's really it. So when you add more fish, it's going to go through. It may go through a little spike again because it, now the bacteria has to compensate. So I always recommend another bottle of the TurboStar, or if you have any leftover, some people still have some leftover, uh, to dose it when you get more fish again. And maybe even on the third time, third or fourth time. Depending. Absolutely. Uh, it definitely does not hurt. It's not absolutely necessary once the tank is established. <laughs> Say you've had the tank a year and you want to get some fish. You really don't absolutely need this, honestly. But it wouldn't hurt. Uh, yeah. But a tank that's new, I would definitely suggest. Typically, that. once you're eight months to a year out, um, if you have a good fish load and you have a good biologic filtration on that tank, uh, there's enough beneficial bacteria that's built up and colonized that's large enough where it can replicate and breed at a fast enough rate to keep up with like a few new additions in the aquarium. Um, but that's where it comes in point. People always ask us, like, what's the difference between seven and turbo start? Well, they're the same bacteria, the same live nitrosomus and nitrobacter bacteria, but this is 10 times less concentrated than what TurboStart is. Uh, so this way is a really, it. yes, way, way less concentrated. This whole bottle does 80 gallons, this little bottle does 200 gallons, but this only lasts for six months in your refrigerator. And keep that in mind. Now this is gonna last, oh man, uh, the expiration date is it's not until- It's quite a while, yeah. Um, 2022. Yeah, so October of, of yeah. 2022. So you're gonna have this bottle most likely a lot longer and you can keep this just unrefrigerated in your in your cabinet and anytime you touch your benefit bacteria I mean, if you're cleaning your filter out um, even when you do a water change if you do a really good uh, substrate clean you're disrupting beneficial bacteria that's growing in the in the under layers of your substrate um, or anytime like Ali said you add new fish this is a great product to just keep underneath your cabinet you can get in the bigger bottle if you have a larger tank um, they come in like the 30 32 ounce I think bottles yeah. mm -hmm. right that's absolutely great. yes um, so you can keep that right underneath the cabinet, or you can go with the Turbo Start and keep it in the refrigerator if you have it. Um, but most of the time, it ends up going bad, uh, yeah. you know, before you need it. Um, That's why I say, like, in the early stages, you know, keep this. But, you know, like he said, once it's established, if you wanted to add some of this, this is good stuff. Absolutely. It's, it's tough when you have a really big tank because it is very, it's not, con it's very unconcentrated. <laughs> whatever you would yes, say. Yeah. Um, diluted. Diluted, yes. Uh, so if you have a really big system, it may be just more, you know, practical to use this here. Um, but if you've got a smaller aquarium, this is really great anytime you add fish, you know, later on down the road. Um, 
But yeah, so what's, what else? What else you got? Um, I would like to actually talk about, um, I know we briefly touched on pH, and this is something that I get from the beginner hobbyist of first person. When you're setting up your first aquarium, everybody hears about pH first, whether they go to a big box store or something, everybody talks about pH. They come in and they ask me, I just set my tank up and my pH is off. I need something to make my pH okay. And pH is something that should be kept as stable as possible because Fish do not like pH swings, and most of the time that's because um, they're actually struggling to extract oxygen from the water column. Um, when pH goes from either a, a very alkaline to very acidic real fast, you know, if they're switching from one water to the other, that can have an issue. There can be a big pH shock there. And typically, if you have very good oxygen exchange in the water column, then the fish should be okay and they should go through it. Or if you do a slight little drip acclimation or something else. But Besides the point, pH is something that you're not really going to have to worry about when you're setting up the aquarium first. It's the nitrogen cycle. It's ammonia nitrate nitrate. This is going to kill your fish faster than pH ever will, um, especially if you acclimate slowly. Almost any of these captive raised aquarium fish that we get in here at the store, or any store for that matter, is going to adjust to almost any pH and within relative range of like 6.5 to 8.5. And, and you're not really going to have to you know, change it a lot for a lot of these tetras, barbs, especially, Saprinidae, all that family. Um, angels are really hardy with it as well. I see so many fish that, now we have different tap waters at all three stores. Yeah, totally. And, and they're totally different in their pH. And we acclimate them. Sometimes they don't even get a drip acclimate, depending on what the fish is. And they do fine at all three stores. Mm -hmm. They're such hardy, captive raised fish. Once they're in the tank, they have great slime coat um, and, and they're not stressed. They do fantastic. And it's not something you really have to chase. You switching it back and forth, constantly fluctuating it up and down whenever you do a water change is actually going to do more harm than if your South American uh, wild-caught bleeding heart tetras are at 7.6. They do fine in the, in the pH like that. So I just wanted you know, to put that in the video and talk about it because it's a very common um, question that we get all the time is like, how do I fix my pH? Now, if you have water that's very acidic, like our Coventry store, that's what I want to get into you have like zero alkalinity and that pH can fluctuate very easy. And this is where it comes in to keeping it consistent is, is key. And that's where you'll get into products that neutralize or stabilize the pH. So something like Fritz pH neutralizer or some type of alkalinity buffer or something like that is going to keep it, your pH as stable as possible if you use it in the exact same way every time you do a water change and you're not gonna have issues with your pH fluctuating. Um, that's a whole chemistry lesson and we can get into that at another time. but. Um, basically, if you have really acidic, soft water that has nothing in it, like anyone that is in the situate water, in Providence Water Authority area, um, you're going to have the same as what we have here at the Coventry store. Um, and that's something you want to use, some type of neutral regulator or an offline buffer, just to buffer a little bit, but keep it consistent. Always use the same amount, um, and you'll be safe from it. You don't want to swing a lot, and that's just something I wanted to Stability is key with any Absolutely. aquarium, any fish. That's really what matters. And like you said, I hear that a lot too. Um, you know, my pH is seven six. What do I do? <laughs> and I have tetras. Are <laughs> they gonna like, die? It's okay. Yeah. Um, like you said, fish pretty much almost all fresh not almost all, but most freshwater fish are captive right now. Um, so they're used to that. So don't panic if it's a little off. <laughs> Absolutely. Um what do you got? Would you guys want to go into cleaning from that? Well, yeah, I guess so. We're talking about or you cycling wanna, your aquarium. Do you want to go into the difference between like complete guard and ACCR? Well, let's talk about that real quick. Yeah, just so like someone understands the difference because yeah, some people that see is, different products and they don't really understand, understand why what to grab. they're buying them. And there's other products like that too, like API stress coat and things like that. So I, I just think that's a good topic. Because yeah. And you're going to question we get quite a bit what one of these three should i be buying honestly you should have all three in your your, your aquarium cabinet no and all seriously because it they all true. do something different it may not be a hundred percent important and honestly if there's one water conditioner that you would purchase and you're like i don't want any of the other stuff i don't want to confuse myself then honestly a full spectrum water conditioner is probably your go-to so complete um it does everything it, it removes uh chlorine and chloramines um, removes ammonia and detoxifies nitrate nitrate, which is important because if you have chloramine in your water, you should be using something that 
um, removes or detoxifies ammonia because the process of removing chloramines together produces chlorine and ammonia, uh, another term of chemistry okay. class. Okay, we don't have to bore you with all that science, but basically a full spectrum water conditioner is typically your go-to um, if you don't wanna like mess around with anything else. Now, using a product like this, it's, um, I forget the, uh, Sulfur. It's a it's a sulfur compound that actually combines uh, to the nitrite and nitrate, and that's something we can get into as well. So th there's a lot I could talk all day about this. Anyway, it, if you have a planted tank, that's not a water conditioner that you're going to want to use because it's going to um, put organic nitrogen compounds in an unusable form for plants to absorb. It has sodium, and it also has sodium, which we have learned. Um, so if you have a planted tank, then complete is not the one for you. But if you have a fresh water, fish only, or salt water, fish only, complete is the water conditioner that you would purchase. Now they all do something different. ACCR removes ammonia, chlorine, and chloramines. Now that's the one that if you have chlorine and chloramines in your tap water, that would be your go-to. Um, and it's something maybe if you're going through a very high ammonia spike, and that's all it is, just your, your ammonia is super high, but your nitrite is staying low during your, your cycle. ACCR is the one because you're not adding anything extra that you don't need. You know, if you don't have to add it, why add it, right? So, and that's where they all come in. <laughs> oh, boy. He just shaved it off. <laughs> How are you saying beans? I was going to ignore it, but. <laughs> anyway. Um, I just wanted to also say my. <laughs> um, so my go-to when I just have somebody who has a tank, a spent set up, and they need a water conditioner. Um, and they usually buy something like, like Scott said, API stress coat um, at like Petco or PetSmart. But they come in, they found us, and they're like, woohoo, you guys are the best. I want to buy from you guys. What water conditioner should I use? Well, we use fish, uh, Fritz, <laughs> Fritz Guard um, I, on like a regular basis. So this is like my go-to in the store. Um, I like this one the best because it's a, for one, it's a water conditioner, obviously. So it gets rid of chlorine, chloramine. But I also really like it because it has aloe vera and vitamin E for the fish's slime coat, which I really like because anytime we get new fish in, they're stressed, their slime coat is damaged, and this is going to help them, help protect them, help them feel better, and it's going to dechlorinate the water. Um, typically, you know, not now anyway, none of my tanks really have ammonia or nitrate, so I'm not going to use complete. Um, and the ACCR, again, I don't really have any problems with ammonia, so I don't use it. So yeah. if you just have an established tank, and so you, you know, just want a regular basic water, water conditioner, conditioner that also is good for the That's fish. super coat. safe, too. Super safe. You could, realistically, you could probably pour this whole thing in and probably not have a problem. But don't do that. It don't do that. But you're just saying. It's safe. So, very, very safe. Um, you know, complete it. it you, you know, you, like he said, you could dose it five times in one day. But it can be, if you overdose it, it can be, you could have adverse effects. It'll strip oxygen levels Correct. too low. And then you'll, you'll present issues where the fish are suffocating. Um, <laughs> Whereas guard is, is extremely safe. Um, and actually, there's actually one more fun fact about that too. Um, the vitamin E also helps with the beneficial bacteria in the aquarium too. It helps it adhere, which is really neat too. Absolutely. So I really just like to use guard at you know on a regular basis in a regular established aquarium. That's what I would suggest. And that's what I always recommend. But new tanks, you know, the ACCR complete, complete. is is really good option as well. Yes. So heavily stocked or new aquariums complete. Now, if you're going to be getting a lot of a lot of fish all the time and say you're a store i guess accr also has another purpose that we actually use a lot whenever we're getting big import shipments when the fish have been in bags for a long time or even if you're far away you're coming from new hampshire or vermont thank you guys for coming all that way or wherever you're coming from and you have a long drive there go those fish are respirating in the bag they're excreting waste in the bag because you're coming to a store where we feed every day so the fish are not being fasted before they get any sense so they're going to produce more waste when you're purchasing at a store um, versus ordering online the place that may fast the fish before they send them. Uh, so having ACCR, it's going to remove, we actually dose it into a bucket while we're acclimating mm -hmm. to detoxify all that ammonia that the fish have um, produced in their, in their transit. And I actually did a video, you guys can go on our YouTube or Facebook. Um, uh, just recently, we got some new fish shipment in and I explained how I use that um, and specifically how we acclimate fish in certain ways, depending on what they are, what the best way is for different types of fish. Yeah, and um, there was another point I had, but, um, oh, yeah, so <laughs> like he said, when you're acclimating, if you use the ACCR, this is what I would recommend over the complete, 
because there's not going to be nitrite in the water. You know, there's no bacteria in that water in and the bag. That's because it's a sulfur dioxide like compound. It can also lower oxygen levels, which is so definitely you not what you want. If you're acclimating fish, oh for sure. So they all serve a great purpose, like Joe had said, and it really so wouldn't have, have to have all of them. Yeah. Seriously, <laughs> they don't go bad. Really, I mean, it takes a really long time. So you got, oh, you got two, two years at least. So, Absolutely. um, you know, I would suggest, like he said, having all three. There's so, benefits for all. Some are more highly concentrated than the other. But anyway. So the next is cleaning. Yeah, let's get into cleaning, guys. Clean. But before we jump over. on to that, guys, Peter, do me a favor. For you guys out there, just so you know, all these products are available on osachoice.com. That's Peter, right. hit that video for hit me, please. Hit that video, Peter. <laughs> Right, guys, if you want any of these products, the Fritz products, the API test kits, they're all on osachoice.com. Any, any of it, we'll ship it direct to your door. <laughs> Package it up real nice with bubble wrap and everything and send it there so it gets unharmed. Oh, oh and Scott's yeah, got us coming in clutch oh, oh. with all these cleaning utensils. Oh. So tonight, we were talking specifically <laughs> about cycling, getting your new aquarium all up and running. But if you're cycling oh, your aquarium and it's your first one... The Oh, the python the disappears. Py <laughs> <laughs> it's green. It's the perfect color. Um, if you're going through your first aquarium and you're cycling that tank, you are going to need all these first products. You need something to clean the glass. You need something to change the water once you're done with your cycle and your nitrates are higher. That is one thing that we don't want to see. Um, even though nitrates are the least toxic form of organic nitrogen in the water column they eventually do become some form of toxicity at a certain level so water changes and we're holding this python tube right here it's going to be your best friend you guys we recommend weekly 20 to 25 percent i was going to say changes. uh you guys can actually go on youtube and watch my oh, most yes. recent video about how to do a water change because i actually talked all about that um and even if you are you've been doing this a long time you should watch it Good video. <laughs> um, so, like Joe said, you know, you're going to start with your algae scrapers. Honestly, you're probably going to use this before you even use this because when you first start a tank, you're going to start going through the ugly stage, we call it. You get all this algae, everything's Absolutely. brown, you have diatoms, you got fuzzy algae, you got everything, and it's just not looking how you expected. You know, the tank looked amazing the first week you set it up. As soon it's as like, the ammonia oh, nitrite goes away, cycle's right. done, boom, yes. algae. And it's, it's the it's the toughest part, I have to say. So you're probably going to grab a scraper. We've got a few different options here. The mag floats are really great. Uh, this is the one with the um, metal scraper, scraper on it. I really like these. They are great for stuck on algae. You know, in a newer aquarium, you may not have that stuck stuck on algae, but it does work really great for that because you can. You don't even have to use the scraper. You can remove it. So um, good to have. I do want to pause away. you real quick because yeah. uh, Peter so kindly put a question up here from uh tony close uk reef who's on you youtube by the way he hits us a lot up on oh YouTube. we're on youtube right awesome. now I, I forget which one we're on we're on both, both. right yeah that's right would you recommend quarantine for freshwater fish also yeah. i was plagued with snails brought in on plank so short answer is what ali said <laughs> yes any aquarium fish in my recommendation should be quarantined before they're added to your display because at any point in time no matter where it is, unless you have some place that says they fully 110% guarantee quarantine mm -hmm. for 90 but days. Even then, but even, even then, then, it doesn't work. <laughs> I still recommend at least monitoring additionally after you bring them home. Um, you, you can't guarantee that there is not any free floating therons of some type of external parasite or bacteria come in that water um, from anywhere. Even though if the fish is seemingly healthy when you purchase it, it's eating, that's the best part. That, or, well, the most important part is making sure you get that step done, but you should still quarantine it because it's going to be stressed. You're bringing that fish, you're bagging it up, you're blindfolding, you're kidnapping it and bringing it home, okay? It's stressed. It's going to excrete ammonia. It's going to burn some of its slime call off in the bag. It's going to be, um, its immune system is going to be um, suppressed. Uh, so quarantining and making sure that you do some type of rental herbal treatment or something like that, or just monitoring depending on 
um, you know, the, the severity of the situation or how bad the fish looks when you get, get at home or whatever the situation may be, quarantine is absolutely um, a must in, in my opinion. Um, yeah, so for sure. Um, and then with the plants, oh yes, um, I would like to, to point on that. Plagued with snails, you brought in the plants. So I have two points on that. If you are worried in your freshwater aquarium about getting pest snails, so platter snails, pond snails, ram's horn snails, in my opinion, I love them. And I embrace snails like that because they eat algae. They're a nice little cleanup crew in the planet tank. And some of the ram's horn species are really colorful, the blues or the red ones. I love them. Now there's ways to keep them in check. You can use little loaches, um, assassin snails even at some point, if your population gets really large, you throw one or two in there and they'll keep them in check for the most part for quite a while. Manual um, removal as well. Yes, if you really do not like them, now you have two, two ways, uh, two things that you can do. When you purchase all your plants, either purchase them all 100% sterile tissue cultures um, and, and never purchase any that are in the water. If you're really like totally anti, I don't want any snails, purchase them tissue cultures and grow them out that way. Now, if you're like, well, I don't have them available to me or I want to buy plants that are already water uh, um, uh, submersed grown and fully transitioned to underwater growth, then you can actually do a bleach dip on those plants. You can use 100% chlorine bleach diluted one cap per five gallons of water. You do a 10 second swirl and that's going to kill any snail egg cases or anything like that. That's typically how they end up in the water column or in your aquarium. You, you know, you can see adult snails and pick them off before they go in. But sometimes you can miss an egg sac that's underneath a leaf or something. Um, so you can do that little bleach dip and never dip your roots of the plants and go directly into a bath of complete or ACCR, some type of water conditioner and swirl that around in there and let that soak around and then the plants can go in. So just to uh, kind of. Um, so now back to what we were talking about. So where were we? I don't even you're just exactly. cleaning supplies. Yes, so. cleaning. Oh, yes. So you scraped all the algae and your tank is now fully cycled. So now is when you want to start doing the water change because you don't want to do water changes while you're cycling. Uh, but now that you've cycled, it's time to do a water change. So you get this handy dandy thing called the Python Pro Clean. And this is a gravel back. These are important. Um, you know, just scooping water out of the tank and putting clean water in will. It will Dilute immediately, things. you know, remove nitrates, but it's not going to fix the problem. You're not removing the actual physical waste. You're just removing nitrates and they'll just build right back up again because you're not removing that waste. So you have to actually like go through and remove it. So um, we're talking fresh water. I was going to talk about salt real quick, but we'll talk fresh water. Um, always gravel back it's your fresh water live stream tonight. I know, but hey, I'm salty. Yeah, we don't have so. enough. We don't have enough time to go into salt water. Yes, I It'll have to be next week. Next week. Um, but uh, but yeah. So you always want to gravel back your gravel, your sand, which I talk about in my video as well. Um, I'm not going to really go into it right now because we don't have a ton of time. Um, but if you do want to learn more about that, you can go right onto that video. Um, but yeah, so you're gonna. You're gonna gravel back, and you want to really make sure uh, that you're not killing any of this beneficial bacteria that we were talking about. This stuff, this stuff's good, so we're not trying to kill that. So, with that being said, we're not removing any of our sponges from our filters. So, say you have a sump, and it's got um, those black sponges and all that bio media down there. You're never gonna take that out, throw it away. None of that. Uh, that's all good stuff. That's where all your good bacteria has grown and built up. And if you remove that, it's like starting your tank all over again, and you could possibly, you know, kill your fish. So. You Work always just everything. leave that right in there, let it build up. Um, and if you have a hang on back filter and you have sponges in there, say you have a title and it's got that blue sponge, it's got those bio balls, you're not going to take those out. You never replace those, you know. Um, they do sell the replacement sponges in case they really start to break down because eventually they may. That's like um, a year. You know, after a couple of years or so, they do break down and you may have to replace it, but your tank's already pretty established by then. Um, but we're still talking new here. So you're not going to throw that out. You're always going to keep that in there with those bio balls and if you throw a carbon in there you know that you can replace but everything else just stays and if you know if you've got a canister same thing you're not throwing that away um so you never want to over clean the tank you're not taking everything out um you know sometimes the newest hobbyists hear water change and they think they have to take everything out fish included but no we just leave everybody in there make the least stressful as possible we're just gonna like he said remove about 20 25 percent you can even go as heavy as 50 percent uh, without hurting Absolutely. anything as long as you're not swinging temperature or ph too much um so you know you can gladly do that but just don't replace any of those sponges those are super important um and just keep those in there and let the bacteria live and colonize and build up because that's super important to keeping that tank healthy and established um one thing i'd like to say as well with with 
stemming off that with Allie, um, any of that media, if it is starting to get gunked up with a lot of organic waste, um, you can use products like Monster 360 or 360 to help or remove um, and, and reduce uh, organic sludge and waste in the aquarium on your biological media. And that's something you can dose weekly. Um, and then also, if it is really something that's starting to build up, you have a really heavy waste aquarium, it's something you can clean or at least rinse off. But whenever you're working with beneficial bacteria media in your newer aquarium, especially if it's newer, um, you you're want to use your aquarium water that you're taking out with your water change and rinse all your media in that and be very fast and diligent with it and try not to leave your nitrified bacteria media, um, your beneficial bacteria media exposed to air for a long period of time. You want to clean it off, rinse it good, and get it right back in where it was in water. Yeah, don't leave um, it out on the counter or on the floor. You want to make sure you put that right back anything. in, right back in when you're done in water. Um, you know, don't pour out the hang on back filter and leave it dry because you will kill that good bacteria, um, which is really crucial to your tank. So definitely keep that in mind. Um, when you are doing a water change, just make sure that, like I had kind of quickly mentioned before, the temperature is the same. Try your very best. Um, you know, we have a small water heater here, so, um, you know, we kind of have to like balance it out. But at home, you can very easily, you know, adjust the temp as best you can. If you're filling in buckets and then pouring it in, then you can easily just put a thermometer in there and make sure it's as close as you can physically get. You know, try to degrees. keep it within a couple degrees uh, plus or minus. Or if you have the wonderful... No spill. spill. <laughs> Look at it, see through. Um, the no spill um, uh, python tube then you know you, you can still adjust it from there but just keep just keep the thermometer in the tank and make sure you're not swinging that temperature too much i like to kind of let it run in the sink and make sure it's the right temperature before putting it in the tank um but these guys are a lifesaver especially you know if you've got the tank in a totally different room from the sink and it's a big tank you got a 220 gallon you don't want to feel like dragging five gallon buckets around so that you can actually drain the tank um if you've got the hookup for it on the sink you hook it up, you can drain the tank with it, for one, and then you can also fill the tank with it, which is really awesome. So no more five-gallon buckets, really, really great. And even if it's, you know, in the same room, it's still good to have. You don't have to lift buckets. It's, it's really great if you've got somebody that can't lift, um, has a bad back or whatever, you know, you don't want to be lifting those buckets, and that's really the best way to go. It's so easy. It's all we use here, too. Um, we have a lot of tanks to fill, so <laughs> no five-gallon buckets. Absolutely. For that. <laughs> um, so. Last point I did want to cover before we end the live video. I know we're running out of time here. I appreciate everybody that has joined us tonight, um, and it's something I failed to mention in the beginning um, as far as cycling. We're going we're gonna to dive back oh, into that. We're going to recap this, okay? You got all your new stuff and everything. Um, Cycling in the aquarium with just fish food. Oh, yeah. It is my biggest pet peeve, um, I think, with cycling in the aquarium. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is a way that it can be achieved and it can be done, but the process takes so long. It, it prolongs long, everything. Long um, because if you're not, what if you don't put enough in and then you're feeding every day or you put too much in? Then those ammonia levels, instead of being at like a recommended 0.2 ppm, uh, with dosing your fish with fuel or very small amounts of ammonia like 0.5 or 0.5 when you're adding small amounts of groups of fish and you're controlling feeding them and you're not overfeeding, which you can check a video out on how not to as well on our YouTube channel. Um, putting in, if you, especially if your first tank, you're going to dump a whole handful of food in there. And then that food is just going to continue to rot and decay and it takes a long time to really break down completely because there's no, like, um, other great beneficial bacteria that are going to be um, breaking down that food before it's converted to ammonia. Actually, the fish yeah. do that for you. So they're taking it through their digestive tract and they're producing it as waste, as ammonia, and it's readily available for your bacteria to use immediately as soon as it comes out the other end of the fish. It takes a very long time for food to break down. People don't realize as You're, soon as you put it in, it takes actually quite a long time. It could start breaking down a week from now. It may not start breaking down tomorrow. You're it's going to take at least a week to even yeah. start breaking down. And Absolutely. then another week maybe to start reading ammonia on the test. And now you're waiting for that. And then, you know, once that runs out and then you're, so you're not still continually feeding, then that bacteria is going to die. Um, Before you know, you're able to get fish exactly. in there because your nitrites are still sky high and exactly. it's too toxic. So It's just a very, like... It can work. It's an old school way of doing it. It can be done. Absolutely. But I really don't recommend it. If you're going to do anything, do the fishless fuel. It's a quick, safe, you know, you're not risking any fish or anything. Nice, as long as you dose it, 
Yes, as long as you dose, it's recommended. If you overdose, you're gonna have ammonia forever. Um, <laughs> but or if you just do fish that are hardy, you know, um, it's the paper one. You really won't have issues, especially if you're dosing the complete. So, um, you know, food, throw it out. Don't do that. Just do fishless fuel or fish, and you'll have a way better success rate for sure. It'll uh, it'll go a lot faster. Everything will be safe. Everything is good. That was that was my whole point in my video tonight on how to properly cycle a new aquarium and just show you guys some uh, cleaning utensils and what you need really when you're purchasing your first 10 or 20 or 30 or 50.3. Or go big, 220. Yeah, or, or whatever it is. Or go big. I think, folks, we're out of time. Scott wants to say something. Yeah, you guys got to get ahead. Just <laughs> make sure you join Ernie and myself next week. Uh, don't forget, we got plenty of new fish. All Lots three stores fish. are jam-packed in fish. Uh, also, Ali got saltwater fish at Wakefield, so Wakefield not out saltwater. Joe's back in freshwater. Oh, Alex's you know we're going to do a live video tomorrow night on Facebook for Seacon to kind of see uh, all and the new Friday, fish. And Friday, I will do a live video at Wakefield as well. So many live videos, so make sure you guys join us. If you guys want live videos, you use you guys, join us on Facebook. But until then, yes. we're getting out of here. Peter, we're taking off. But hit us with the L3 locations video. Guys, we'll see you later. Keep it fresh, baby! Yeah. Woo!